Richard Branson, Virgin. Mark Zuckerberg, Facebook. Elon Musk, Zip2, and PayPal, and Tesla, and SpaceX. <laughs> Great founders are some of the most interesting creatures on the planet, with superpowers both good and evil. Let's get into the bad stuff. Great founders don't work hard. Possibly, possibly the simplest definition of passion is a strong and barely controllable emotion. Now, what that doesn't say is what type of emotion that is. It could be good or bad. It could be happiness or sadness. What it does say is that it's so strong and compelling that one can barely contain it. Great founders love being so inspired by an idea that it keeps them up all hours of the night. They love being so inspired by a problem that it forces them to learn and grow. Otherwise, they have no chance of solving it. They love being so inspired that even though they don't know what's next, they can't wait to get around the next corner and discover what it is for themselves. And all this, in spite of the fact that they know true to their nature, even once they accomplish that mission, they're just going to want to do it again. Romantics are the same way. Romantics love being in a relationship that they just can't stop thinking about. They love being with somebody that challenges them and tests them. They love partnering with somebody through the tough times, braving the uncertainty with great hope for the future. But you know, that hopeless romantic that we all know in our lives, I bet if they had the chance to have the perfect relationship tomorrow, they'd turn it down. Why? Because romantics are in love with the journey, not the end result. Think about it. What's been the most rewarding relationship of your life? Hopefully it's the one you're in right now. <laughs> and what's made it the most rewarding? I bet it's not days like today, where you're sitting in an auditorium like this one, listening to someone like me talk, simply with the knowledge that your relationship's amazing. Rather, I bet it's those moments along the way to that realization that have made it so special. Those arguments you came back from, those tough times you went through together, the good times, the bad times, the crazy times, and everything in between. What that says about great romance is that it's not about the end result, but about the journey. And for great founders, they're the same. If a great founder had everything go perfectly in their startup today, sure, they'd be happy, they would celebrate, but they'd get hungry for that journey again and want to do it all over again. You see, great founders aren't hard workers. Great founders are hopeless romantics, living and loving life to the max. Great founders chase bad ideas, and they can't quit. When Daishin and Eddie moved to Chicago, they wanted to solve a problem. The problem they wanted to solve was new people in a new city after college trying to meet each other. Food brings people together, and so they figured they'd start there. They called it Grub With Us. They got accepted to Y Combinator, one of the premier accelerators, if not the premier accelerators in the world. And they raised one and a half million dollars to chase down this bad idea. Eventually, they came to some truth. It turns out it's really hard to break social norms. It turns out it's a whole lot easier to break plans with a stranger than somebody you actually know. Busy schedules, last-minute cancellations, and general cold feet led to a poor user experience. And on top of all that, it turns out that working with restaurants on an operational level is slightly easier than herding cats. <laughs> Throughout the whole process, though, Daishin and Eddie kept asking themselves questions, a couple of which being, do we still see this as a problem? And if we can solve it, can we do it in a way that's meaningful? Eventually, they came to the answers of no and no, and so they stopped. You see, great founders can't stop chasing bad ideas because they are truth seekers. Once they see a problem, they can't help themselves but get to the truth of it and find out if the truth 
is good or bad. That's important. They need to know what it is, regardless of which of the two. If it's good, that's great. They check the box, and they move forward to a deeper truth. If it's bad, well, then they break it down to its most basic parts and try to fix it. If they can fix it, great. Problem switches from bad to good, and onward they go. If it's bad, well, they ask what's next. What was next for Dyson and Eddie was a GOAT, or more specifically, the acronym GOAT for greatest of all time. It turns out Daishin had been a sneakerhead since the guy was in short pants. He got so good at telling the difference between fake sneakers and real ones as he collected through his adult years that he could do it down to the smell. Yeah, think about that one. As he kept collecting sneakers, he had a bad experience buying some fake ones on eBay and had no recourse. And so, upset with the whole situation, he grabbed his old friend Eddie and started asking some questions. Questions like, do a lot of other people have this problem? Who else does this besides eBay? Is anyone else really using technology to solve this problem? How do other people search for sneakers? Early indications of the truth were good. The industry was fragmented and unsafe. A lot of other people were having this problem. And whole communities were forming online just to talk about how to identify fake sneakers, with or without your nose. The truth still looks fairly good for, for GOAT. Just this past February, it was announced that they had raised $25 million from Excel Partners, one of the premier venture capital firms in the world, to chase down this bad idea. Great founders procrastinate. Now, if I was to ask you all, who of you are procrastinators, I'm pretty sure I'd get a mixed response. Partially be because no one likes to admit they, they procrastinate. And partially because sometimes it's a bit hard to tell. It's OK. I came here today to make it easy on all of you. You are and you do. <laughs> in, in fact, we all do. One of the best kept secrets I learned a few years ago is that we are all procrastinators. And the only difference between high achievers and low achievers is that low achievers procrastinate on high value tasks and high achievers procrastinate on low value tasks. Now, it's not fair to just assume that that person in your life who you perceive to be a low achiever is a lazy person who looks at high value tasks and says, I'm not about that life. No, it's not quite that simple. In fact, given the landscape of opportunities and tasks in our life, it's genuinely difficult to truly discern which ones are of high value and of low value over the course of time. Great founders aren't just procrastinators. Great founders are master procrastinators. Great founders use procrastination as a reverse tactic to fine-tune their focus. Possibly the best example of this is a young Mark Zuckerberg. And to prove my point, have you listened to an interview from him roughly a decade ago? Where are you taking Facebook at this point? You're going to expand to those other schools that you're not at, mm -hmm. and then what? I mean, there doesn't necessarily have to be more. You know, I mean, like a lot of people are focused on like taking over the world. They're doing like the biggest thing, getting the most users. And I mean, I think like part of making a difference and doing something cool is focusing intensely. There is a level of service that we can provide when we were just at Harvard that we can't provide for all of the colleges. And there's a level of service that we can provide when we're a college network that we wouldn't be able to provide if we went to other types of things. So, I mean, like, I really just want to see everyone focus on college and create, like, a really cool college directory product that just, like, is very relevant for students and, like, has a lot of, like, information that people care about when they're in college. So. I don't, I don't know what that is, and it's not everything that's on the Facebook now. Did you just hear that? That was Mark Zuckerberg. Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook. Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook saying he was not interested in having the most users. The same Facebook that bought WhatsApp in 2014, a company do doing about $20 million in revenue, for what turned out to be over $20 billion only because 
they'd help Mark get to the most users. It makes me think maybe the biggest takeaway from today is that we shouldn't forget Mark also said he wasn't interested in taking over the world. <laughs> Great founders are some of the most interesting, unique, mind-boggling, confusing creatures on the face of the earth, with superpowers both good and evil. Whether it's a hopeless romance for life that drives them to create groundbreaking work, an inability to turn away from a bad idea like a dog in a room full of squirrels, <laughs> or an intense procrastination that leads to a quarter of the world's population using their app, great founders use everything they have, good and evil, to create real value and punch new holes in the world. Thank you.